I'm here with Ajax Phillips, the co-director of the marvelous new documentary, Freak Power, The Ballot or the Bomb. Um, now, I wanted to, first of all, welcome you and, and thank you very much for, for taking the time to talk with me about this, this documentary. How, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. We had a big weekend this weekend. It was Freak Power Day on Saturday. I wanted to ask you about that. So what, what can you tell me about this? Because I got the press release that this was coming up, but you know, I'm out here in Chicago, so I couldn't be across the country in Colorado. Were you able to attend? Um, and if so, what, was, what, what happened? What was it like? Um, so in anticipation of the film being released on Friday through Amazon, we wanted to do some kind of event for the town of Aspen because Freak Power is set in Aspen. And so we decided to enact some of Hunter's ideas for the campaign, including sodding the streets of downtown and uh, changing the name of Aspen to Fat City for the day. Um, and the mayor uh, made a proclamation on the steps of the courthouse and the sheriff spoke, and then we did a voter registration event. And at night we showed the film on the roof of the Aspen Art Museum. Now, what was that? like? I mean, I imagine for a lot of the residents, it was the first time seeing the finished documentary. What was the, the response to it, especially from some of the old timers, I imagine, who are still kicking around the town and, and maybe remember Hunter fondly? There was so much enthusiasm. I, unfortunately, because of social distancing, we could only show it to 50 people. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we were sold out before the event actually even went live. Um, and we really wanted be able to show it again but of course there's a lot of nostalgia um a lot of enthusiasm but also just this incredible sense of having come full circle back to the same place 50 years later yeah and that's something i wanted to ask you about as well um there, there are a lot of parallels between, well, let me just set this up. <laughs> the movie is a documentary about uh, Hunter Thompson's run for the sheriff of Pitkin County back in 1970 uh, and all the hijinks that ensue, but not necessarily the kind that you associate with the wilder and crazier, you know, drug addled Hunter Thompson of Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, which was a, you know, a couple of years later. Um, but in terms of the parallels to today, there was one that stuck out as particularly shocking and surprising in that he at one point says that Hunter says he could walk through the streets uh, doing drugs and throwing bombs and he probably wouldn't lose any of his supporters. This ironically reminded me of something that Donald Trump had said, I think, in the last election about how he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and have similar results. Were there, was there anything that stuck out to you as particularly surprising beyond the obvious parallels uh, of like the national conversation about everything from like race to, to police uh, that you just weren't expecting as you were compiling all this footage and creating this, this narrative? Um, I mean, I think the issue of police brutality overall was something that Hunter was very focused on. When we started making the rough cut of this film, it was not as big of a national issue as it's become this year. So we weren't necessarily anticipating walking into this being such a relevant issue right now. I think also we anticipated there being some degree of instability coming up to this election, but we never could have anticipated the country being where we are right now. That's 2020 for you. Um, <laughs> so let's let's go back. Um, what was your uh, connection to Hunter Thompson? What inspired you about him and his life, his, his writings? Uh, what really switched on to him? Um, so, you know, Hunter is a, a local hero here in Aspen. Um, and DJ Watkins, who's the co-director with me, um, and I, we wrote a book called Freak Power um, mm -hmm. that came out in 2015. Um, and that had come from DJ doing research on the artist activist Thomas W. Benton, um, who was a friend of Hunter's. And while DJ was doing the research for that book, he found all this incredible primary source material um, from, of, from the campaign in 1970. And then later on in 2017, somebody came to us with a reel of film from uh, 1970 and it just said Hunter Thompson for Sheriff on it. And it was one reel of 16 millimeter film. And DJ and uh, one of the editors, Tony Prakel, they, they digitized it and looked at it and they realized, oh my God, this is something really incredible. And so they went back to the filmmaker who had originally shot that 16 millimeter reel and they found 40 more reels. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. 
<laughs> so was this uh, was this footage well preserved? I mean, one of the things that's so striking about the doc, aside from the the political, you know, marvelous political story, is the fact that a lot of this archival footage looks like it was shot today and just had a black and white filter thrown over it. I mean, was there a lot of restoration, or is this stuff just kept in someone's vault and they just <laughs> dusted off and gave it to you? Some of the film literally disintegrated as it was being digitized. It, it came apart in pieces. Um, and then five reels had never even been developed. So the, the most damaged film that you actually see in the movie um, is because it was just developed in the last year. Um, and obviously those chemicals that um, are used to make the film are very unstable and they become more unstable over 50 years of sitting inside of a real case. So we were super fortunate that they even came out when they were developed. Wow. Um, what, uh, out of all of those, those reels that you got to see, was there material that you wished you could have included in the film, but perhaps for time, or maybe it was just possibly the topic of a completely different movie or series of movies? What was the one that you really hated to let go? Well, I think the most frustrating thing was there were some reels where we had the footage, but we were missing the audio and their interviews. For example, with uh, Oscar Acosta, um, who is, that's Dr. Gonzo in Fear yeah. of Las Vegas. Um, he was here for most of the campaign and he was sort of an advisor to Hunter because Oscar had just run for sheriff in Los Angeles County. Um, and we have this amazing interview with him and we could never find the audio. Um, and the same thing, Sandy Thompson, Hunter's wife, we also have an interview with her, but we were never able to find the audio. Wow. Um, yeah, that was that was something that stuck out to me was, you know, Oscar shows up uh, later on in the picture, but we never hear him speak, I don't think. Um, I don't even know if I know what his voice <laughs> sounds like. I've read about him and, and seen, you know, other kind of footage of him. But uh, yeah, so now back to like your personal history with uh, with Thompson's writing, aside from him being kind of a local, you know, mythic uh, figure in Aspen, uh, was there something about his work in particular that uh, that inspired you? I mean, I think Hunter was one of the most important political writers of the 20th century for the time when he was really on point and very immersed in American politics. I think he wrote stuff that has endured and is still completely relevant right now. And I think you see that in the way that he talks about politics in the campaign. Unlike most politicians who, if you listen to most politicians from 1970, they sound incredibly outdated and it sounds kind of hokey. Hunter sounds like he's talking about 2020. Yeah, and that's, you know, I, I reread uh, Campaign Trail 72 a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was right around the time of the 2016 election. And it's it's just odd, the, the crazy circus nature of it, which kind of causes me to wonder, and this, I think, documentary underscores that, is the idea of cycles playing out through human and certainly political history. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be a hopeful <laughs> idea or uh, kind of a doomsday one. Um, how optimistic are you about what's uh, what's happening in the culture? And do you think there's something particular in Hunter's messaging that could really, if it were allowed to penetrate through all of the kind of media chaos and bombardment of messaging, that could really strike a lightning bolt into the way we think about politics today? I think for me in a way, it's almost reassuring to see that the country was in such an un unstable, unstable place 50 years ago. There were four, over 4,000 domestic bombings in 1970. Um, and so in some ways to be at this point where things are so unstable again and realize that we've gotten through a time like this in the past, I think could be somewhat reassuring. I think in terms of Hunter's message, I think everything Hunter says about law enforcement, everything he wrote about law enforcement is completely relevant right now. He had whole diagrams and plans for how to restructure the sheriff's department to make it more about community enforcement and more about the harm reduction model, which is where we try to help people before they commit a crime so that they don't end up in jail in the first place. Um, I think all of that is utterly relevant right now. Yeah, and that's something that <clears throat> I think I had forgotten because I, I knew about the sheriff run uh, from, I think, the BBC documentary uh, that I'd seen on one of, the, I think, the Criterion uh, disc. 
And there's a lot of that footage in here, but it's almost expanded out to, uh, you know, this is, that was like a teaser trailer for <laughs> this movie almost. And it's really beautiful to see a lot of this put into context. And to what you're saying, Hunter Thompson has a, the reputation of being kind of an outlaw, of course, gonzo journalist, but he had a supreme respect for the kind of right kind of authority. I think he believed uh, in people and to see that he had a plan and that a lot of the people around him had a plan was, to your point, kind of inspiring that they're paving a path forward, even if it's something that hasn't really been realized yet. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, the odd things is I know there's another movie i think it's about this race called freak power that's a drama or it's a it's a fictitious fictitious you know narrative i don't know if it's a drama or a comedy or a dramedy or whatever were you aware of that when you were <laughs> working on this and did you encounter any kind of conflicts in the production like different people from the productions trying to talk to the same folks for interviews and things like that um theirs is a scripted film right and uh um, so we actually didn't have really any crossover between different groups of people who we were talking to because, I mean, obviously you saw the film, it's quite a straightforward documentary. Um, I think, you know, the, the director of the film, of the other film was very, very much aware of us because of us having written the book um, and the book had come out in 2015. Um, so we are not aware of any plan for their film to come out right now. Um, yeah, I because I think I had heard about it, and then when I was looking up, you know, information on this one, I'm like, oh, that's right, I, I had heard something about it. But um, well, you've you've beat them to the punch, if nothing else. <laughs> um, and honestly, I the one of the cool things about this is even though it's a documentary, it has all the sort of narrative punch and surprises of, you know, a scripted drama. Um, Carol Whitmire, the opponent, uh, the sort of incumbent sheriff uh, in this race, he's presented a certain way where watching the kind of freak movement that Thompson was leading versus Carol Whitmire, it was kind of close, uh, at least in my mind, because he did seem like just kind of a boring town sheriff who didn't, you know, want the hippies on everybody's lawns or something like that. But there's some deeper stuff going on uh, that was sort of a, a revelation, almost a, a disappointment. Um, but uh, when in terms of digging into that, and also in terms of the uh, the Freak Power Day in Aspen, did you run into any kind of conflict or people that weren't fans of Hunter Thompson, the sort of moneyed elite that he was railing against back then? And I imagine is still kind of, you know, not favored in the town today. You know, it, it's really odd. I think, you know, it's easy to like people when they're dead. Um, <laughs> so I think, you know, also, I think it, it's, it's almost, it's not cool in Aspen to not like Hunter. Um, and so, I even I hear from a lot of you know developers um, and real estate people they love Hunter and you know they still feel this affinity for Hunter's ideas and Hunter I mean Aspen is a very liberal town despite the fact that we have absolutely crazy late stage development um, we still are a very very liberal town and I think a lot of Hunter's ideas have become realities. And so they don't seem so far fetched anymore either. We, we have a pedestrian mall now um, for a pretty large part of downtown Aspen. Marijuana is legal in Colorado. <laughs> yep. um, development here actually was very much curtailed. They were going to do a 30,000 unit um, development just outside of Aspen that was prevented basically by Hunter and Hunter's followers. It's like a, like a suburban subdivision or something or? Yeah, it's called Wildcat Ranch. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like the bunny ranch or something. Well, probably with the same, uh, <laughs> same concept. Yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, that's, that's crazy. And, and also nice to see that, uh, people can make a difference when they, they stand up and, and fight for what they believe in. Um, I was wondering as far as, uh, you know, talking about legacy, what do you hope that your movie is going to achieve? And do you think it will penetrate with people who are kind of maybe showing up expecting to see the, the gonzo craziness they may have seen in like Terry Gilliam's movie? We're definitely trying to highlight and focus on the more serious side of Hunter as a political writer and kind of as a almost political philosopher. 
Um, I, I think that really is, in my opinion, the meaningful part of Hunter's enduring legacy. And that's never been focused on before in a film. And so we're hoping that when people watch it, they'll realize, wow, Hunter had so much more to him than this portrayal of him and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Well, and as far as um, you and your you know, creative endeavors, uh, are you planning to work on to do more documentaries? Do you have more stories that you want to unearth and tell in this medium? We have a few things in mind, but um, <laughs> right now we're just, you know, pretty focused on making sure getting free power out there on on Amazon's and on um, iTunes and Google Play so that people can see it. Um, and then once we, once we're done with that, we'll start uh, thinking about the next project. Oh, sure. And and I I don't mean to step on 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 this one, um, but I'm just thinking in terms of the I mean the the time and the effort and the money that it took to to put this all together, and also working with a co-director on you know realizing a book that you'd worked on for some years. I imagine this is has this been a ten year project, including the book and and then this film. I mean, it's been eight years. It's eight years your project yeah yeah so it's definitely this is the you know kind of denouement of a, a tremendous body of work for us and did you imagine i mean this this footage kind of came to you and, and was the seed of of the greater documentary but did you imagine when you were working on the book all those years ago that it might become a film you know, D DJ had shot some interviews and, you know, we'd played around with this idea, but without any primary source footage, it, it didn't feel like it was a really viable project. It wasn't until we got the 16 millimeter real film. And then we met Mimi Polk Gitlin, who is our uh, lead producer. And she introduced us to Angus Wall, who is our another producer of ours. And they were the ones who, you know, helped us to really bring everything together and to to make this into you know a really a really solid uh you know professional documentary and that because we we come from a writing background not from a film background right um now kind of wrapping up here i wanted to ask this is sort of an oddball question but it's scary season. We're in October and there are certainly a lot of weird and scary things happening in the world right now. Do you have a favorite movie that you like to watch this time of year? Not necessarily your favorite horror movie, but something that you bring out as sort of comfort food with the spiced cider and the pumpkins. Hmm. Comfort food. Comfort, I mean, comfort I movie. Watch, yeah. If I was going to watch a movie right now, it'd be idiocracy. But, uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of, of a, uh, comfort film, um, escape to which mountain, that's a great movie. <laughs> I've asked this question of a few people recently, and the the Disney kind of Halloween movies come up a lot. They, they really <laughs> caught something there. I don't know. I expect like Friday the 13th or Saw or something, but no. I mean, that's... in terms of comfort, that's very, those are those childhood movies, I guess, are comforting. Yeah, I guess Saw isn't really comfort food. Um, so, so it makes sense. <laughs> or comfort film. Um, but cool. I, I am excited for people to see this as a, a lifelong, well, not lifelong, half my life Hunter Thompson fan since I discovered him when I was about 20. Uh, I've been really immersed uh, in his lore and his writings. I, I named my son after him. Uh, it's, it's a really a cool thrill to see a movie about Hunter Thompson. For, for going on this journey, putting this out. Congratulations. And uh, I hope everyone gets to see it, especially uh, before the election. Yeah, I hope so too. That's why we, we wanted to get it out onto Amazon um, on Friday was so that hopefully as many people as possible will be able to see it. Yes. All right. Well, cool. Thank you so much, Ajax, and, uh, and take care. Yep. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye.